everybody. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Hello. Hi. We're going to start here. (laughs) Okay. A a billion things are competing for my brain. They're all like, pick me, pick me. Um, Okay, we're going to say this first. We have just finished today's interview and are so thankful we had it today. Oh my gosh. I didn't, uh, I didn't know what I needed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the answer was, was TIG. Was TIG. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. We mentioned this in this, in this show, but just so you know, for context, um, this is coming out in a few weeks, but today's November 6th. So yesterday was the election. And, um, Amy and I just sort of stumbled into the studio this morning. Uh, I don't even know if we really said a couple of full sentences to each other. I was just like, how are we going to get through this? And why are we doing an interview this morning? And I was, I was so discombobulated. I was an hour early. That's a hundred percent right. Which she texted me at like eight 30 or eight, eight, eight o'clock and said, I'm on my way. And I called her. I'm like, why, why are you on your way? We don't have anything until 10. And she was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what time is. I just, I guess I will stay here for another hour. Oh, uh, yes. Anyway. <clears throat> um, we came in a little very disoriented. And all I can just tell you is that I'm glad that you're here because that was an hour ago. And we've just finished this interview. And we just looked at each other and went, can you believe how much we just laughed today? I can't believe it. No, me neither. I didn't think I had it in me. I said before we hit record, I don't have this in me today. She, she's a magician. She, she grabbed us with a rope and like pulled us. Whoops! I just hit. Just pulled us out of the muck and mire somehow. I don't know how she did it, but I'm glad you're here today. Are you feeling just ever so slightly better? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, she like yeah. Pulled me out of the swamp of sadness. That's right. I mean, a couple times we threw our heads back in laughter. Like, I would not have believed that possible this morning. But onward, because I, I'm just, I can't wait for you to hear. She, she told us the funniest stories. I, mm-hmm. I cannot wait for you to hear this episode. But before we get to it, we're going to do a couple little segments. And we're going to start out with rant or rave. It's time for rant or rave. When we rant or we rave. In homage to Tig Nataro today, let's do a little rant or rave. I already know how you're going to answer this. Yeah. The whole concept of doing stand-up comedy. So stand-up comedy. And let's just say, not do we like it or not like it, because of course we like it. Yeah. Would you do it? That's the rant or rave. No. No way in hell. Can you imagine? Uh, can I imagine you doing stand up not in 40 million consecutive years? I honestly can't imagine anyone doing mm-hmm. stand up. I mean, I I see it happening. Yeah. I'm so grateful, but how how do they do it? Yeah. I I that's not your zip code. Although I love it. <clears throat> you are a person who absolutely understands live events. Yes. And, and production and behind the curtain things. <laughs> right. <laughs> No, first of all, I could I could never get the mic right. Mm, like, oh. I struggle sitting in a chair with a mic stand, mm-hmm. like still talking into the mic. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so like moving around, holding the mic, like all of that, I would fail disaster. Like the physical part of stand up comedy is what has got you down here. Well, that's number one. Okay. Like what do I do with my body and my hands? Yeah, numbers numbers two through one hundred is okay. everything else. I'm sure, like just being able to memorize a whole hour's worth of material. That I agree with. I was stunned at their capacity to talk for one hour without notes. Mm-hmm. Stunned. Uh, we, I mean, we talk all the time on the show about the importance of being vulnerable and open and. Yeah. Like seeing the good in every situation, uh, but that is taking it to a different level. Like there's always so much 
darkness and sadness as the undercurrent mm. to really good comedy. Listen. Um, and being able to just perform that and make a whole room laugh. Here's where you're not self-aware. There's numerous places, but let me just say, begin with this one. What you are not self-aware about is that, first of all, your source of material, of stand-up comedy content, is so deep. That well is so deep, there's no bottom to it. Your actual life and the stories that have come from it are stand-up material. They're bits. You have, you have built a life of bits. And I am sorry to tell you, one time I got a text from Amy, and I can't really remember the context. I wrote about this in some book without asking your permission, and I'm sorry about it, kind of. But um, right. something, the text was like, it's just kind of a, it's just a, we're having a rough day over here. Um, Tiffany, the handlebar riding chicken has died. And I'm just like, I don't need to know any more than that sentence. Like I... Why is Tiffany riding on a handlebar? Why, why is her name Tiffany? To be honest, like, why is she just riding around with your boys on their bikes? What happened to her? I, I, the, there were so many questions that I just went. I don't need any more information. I'm sorry about Tiffany. R.I.P. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's one of a billion. Y'all have said this so many times. I will never forget the despair I felt. One morning at church, mm -hmm. I cried through the whole service. Oh, boy. I was sitting a couple of rows behind your mom. Yeah. And so afterwards, she was like, what is going on? <clears throat> and I sat down and told her the story. Um, and she laughed so hard, she cried more than I had. I'm so sorry. During the whole service. We're not a compassionate <laughs> people, okay? And I kept saying, Jana... <laughs> This is actually really, really sad. Like we're, we're devastated. Like we have so many feelings about this. I need comfort f from you. Mm -hmm. And she was like, "I'm so sorry. That's the funniest shit I've ever heard." You knew you were barking up the wrong tree. And what was the sadness about? Listen, it was about an animal who I, died. I'm sorry, I knew it was about a dead animal, and that's a whole segment we are going to devote some considerable time to one day about your situation with dead animals. Well, no, no. Okay. We take such good care of our pets. People, yeah. listeners. Yeah, I know. No. We've lived in the same house, like, since Brad was five. Yes. Her husband, so, Brad, grew up in this house, and they have now lived in it for all these years. So every pet, anyone in our family or the extended family has yes. ever had, like, including, like, fish and, mm -hmm. like, small rodents is buried in our yard. Every one of them. Could you just put a number on it? Well, if you were to take a guess. Years ago. 10 yeah. years ago, you made me count, yeah. and I made a list on a legal pad. It had to be a legal pad, not oh a small God. one. And it was, like, I don't, in the 40s? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Amy, what you need to know, listener, is that she lives in a pet cemetery. <laughs> and that is real. And she has made at least one of my children complicit in the burial grounds. Um, one time, Ben Hatmaker was staying at your house. I don't remember where we were. He stayed with you for like three or four days or something. Am I mm -hmm. getting this right? And I don't, I don't get an explanation. I just get a text. Again, a lot of this content just comes via one very weird sentence. And I get a text like, things are going fine. Be advised. Ben may be slightly traumatized. Buried a dead dog at 10.30 p.m. with headlamps on. He was a part of it. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't know how to process that information that he was a grave digger for another dead animal in your backyard, digging through hill country rock. You know, it was a lot. Well, it was just a lot. Is all I I'm mean, saying. yes, that's a very loose description. That's fine. I'll um, take that. He actually, he accidentally dug up an old cat. Oh shit. I forgot about that. I forgot he dug up the bones. That was the problem. That, that was, was the trauma. But you know what? He, he handled it. And then like, we just had another like secondary ceremony. Oh, geez. Anyway, all that you, 
you have derailed this completely. It, what I'm trying to tell you is that the dead cat bones have a place in a stand-up bit. It's just you can't be the deliverer, except you can as long as it's not on a stage. Because you tell us these little stories when we're together, and then you make my mom cry tears of laughter in the church lobby Un, unwittingly. Unwittingly. But I'm just saying that you have it in you. It's just not going to work in this format. Well, so my answer is no. Yeah, I know it is. No, uh, rant. Rant on stand-up. Yeah, I know it's a rant. And you? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I don't know. I, I'd like to be somewhere in between them. I, a teeny little bit of rave. Um, in that, I'm used to standing on stages. Yeah. So that's a thing I do. That doesn't feel as paralyzing as it does to you. Um, I'm used to making people laugh. I tell stories. I'm a storyteller. So a handful of years ago, gosh, was it Pepper? Pepper's our producer. He's listening. Uh, let's see. Maybe 2019, I did a summer tour with Heather Land, who we just had on the show. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It was called Hot Summer Nights, but not that hot. <laughs> and it was pure comedy. We weren't out there to like help the world become a better place or encourage women in any meaningful way. It was just giggles. We did bits and it was a comedy like night and it was so much fun. And so having been used to like telling a funny story as an intro, right? Or as an example, I'm like, what if I just made the whole thing, the stories? And it turns out I can. Oh, and that is really fun. It is fun to make people laugh. It is fun to have a story that's so easy to tell because it's your story. Mm-hmm. So I'm not tied to like my notes that have a lot of meaningful words. It's just n- tomfoolery. So anyway, I think I'm, I think I'm rave. I think I'm rave. Well, <clears throat> apparently you keep a bunch of my old texts so you can just use my material. I already in have. your next show. I wrote them in books and then I told you about it like on the day the book was published. Yep. And I used your full name and I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I did ask you, I did send you the writing that I wrote about you in my current book that comes out next year. You did. I just want to say growth has happened. You asked permission. I asked permission. I asked for your veto power. I asked for your editorial yes. input. Mm-hmm. Yep. Growth. Which you gave and I took. Yes. So I just want to say, you I me down. have learned how not to alienate <clears throat> everybody who loves me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Okay, one last. You guys, this holiday season, we've been super inspired by these amazing stories that you have been sharing about the fantastic people in your lives. Today, we are thrilled to spread some of our own holiday cheer by celebrating one of our holiday heroes. And first, we would like to welcome our new friend, Jamie, who nominated her sister, Jennifer Hyatt. Hi, welcome. Hi, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, we're delighted to meet you. Delighted. I'm going to read your letter about your sister that you sent in. Okay, very good. You said, my sister, Jennifer, is the most selfless person I've ever known. She consistently puts others before herself. After losing her mother, my bonus mom, to pancreatic cancer, she time and again focuses on doing all she can to help take care of our dad. She lives in the same town as our dad, who is now in assisted living, so many of the responsibilities fall to her. She never complains, ever. She takes each day with a huge smile on her face. She takes each bump in the road with an unbelievably positive attitude. She only tries to find ways to make others' lives easier and better. Jennifer is spoken so highly of in her job and customer service for insurance. You can hear her smile and how she answers the phone. It's just who she is all the time. She's an absolute angel on earth. She gives everything to others and deserves anything good that can come her way. She's resilient in overcoming grief and loss and finding the bright spot and silver lining in life. I would give her the world if I could. She more than deserves it. Oh, that's so sweet, Jamie. <laughs> so sweet. That you. is so sweet. Okay, tell us a little bit more. 
Uh, she's just amazing person. Um, she lives in Toledo and our dad lives there. Um, he was diagnosed with, um, early onset dementia several Mm. years ago, Mm. and then it's progressed. Um, he was living in Alabama and we had to move him to Toledo. Mm. Um, that's where she lives. Um, and she, for two years, he lived on his own and she had to pick up and go over when he needed help. Um, and, she's just the first call and she never says no. She never complains. Mm. Uh, I often apologize because I'm not in Toledo, so I can't be there for everything. But um, her response is always like, it's just what we do. It's what I do. It's you would do it if, if it were, mm. the roles were reversed, but she just, she does that for everybody though. She, mm. she constantly is giving to others, puts everybody else before herself. She's amazing. Oh, oh, I've got a lump in my throat. That's so special. I love you for writing in for her and on her behalf. It's like our delight to get to celebrate her. This is, you know, she is the exact kind of person who gives and gives and serves with joy and doesn't get recognized, right? Like she's not going to be on the front of a magazine. She's not going to be in a commercial. Like that's our girl. That's the one that we are like... That's one of our winners. So before and that's who she is, she's amazing. <laughs> before we give her the goods, let's meet her. Let's bring Jennifer okay. on in. Hey, there she see. is. There, there she, she is. is. It takes a village. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, we're so happy to meet you. Um, we have been told a handful of really Thank wonderful you. things about you, um, and as you are now well aware, Jamie wrote to us about you and told us the most beautiful story of a sister who loves her family with all her heart and with joy and doesn't complain, takes care of her dad, takes care of her people. And I am so happy to meet you. And I would love to hear before we share a little something with you, um, a little bit about your life right now and your dad and your family and what that looks like on a day-to-day basis. Um, I am married to my husband, Mark. We've been married for 22 years. Mm -hmm. Um, No kids. I'm okay with that. We have uh, 11 greats uh, between the two of us and um, seven nieces and nephews, so plenty. Yeah. Um, I do take care of dad. Um, Love doing that. Sundays are our day together. Um, Go to church, go shopping, go to breakfast, Mm. um, just kind of hang out and do that. Um, I am a licensed insurance agent um, for Julie Span Johnson State Farm. Don't know if I can say that or not. Sure. (laughs) Sure. She has given me, uh, she's wonderful, flexible um, for Mm. my needs with dad. Um, So, but yeah, I've been doing that for 10 years now and I love it. Mm. So, yeah. We love her. We love her. (laughs) Caretaking is a thing. That's right. So many families um, manage and to manage it well is. That's right. um, Something so special. That's right. We're they're that age where um, our parents are in that space where we are transitioning in the way that we care for them. That's right. That's yep. right. Mm-hmm. Well, to honor your incredible yeah. spirit, we are gifting you with a $500 gift card to spend however you'd like. That's right. However you need. Wow. Um, and because we know you're someone who always takes care of others, That's right. we're also going to give you a $500 gift card to the Jen Hatmaker gift guide so you can oh my continue oh, to yeah. lavish. Wait till you see this thing. Um, gifts on all your people who you love so well throughout the year. That's right. Oh my goodness. That's That's right. So awesome. That's a thousand dollars to you, you, sis. Some of it better get spent on yourself. I'm telling you, some of it (laughs) has to go to something you want off that gift guide. And we forced you, we forced you to do it because we're like, this 500 is yours to do what you want. (laughs) This 500 is going to spend on yourself. So we are so proud of you. And I promise. We love getting to highlight such a beautiful soul on our little space. And 
Um, I was just telling Jamie that your kind of lovely work in the world is so special and so profound, but it's never going to be on a commercial. We're not going to see you on the front of a magazine. So we're going to find a way to and I'm you okay with that. at the front <laughs> of the For the Love podcast. That's where you're going. So oh, out front of, our, front of our community and... We are, we're delighted to celebrate you. So thank you to Jamie for the beautiful nomination that absolutely captured our heart. And thank you. Thank you to Jennifer for just being so worthy of it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jamie is so, so, so worthy too. Mm -hmm. Um, She is as equal to this as I am. I believe And I don't know what I would do without her. She might get one of the little things off the gift guide. I'm saying you got five hundred dollars to spend Absolutely. over there. So thank we're you so, so happy much. to meet you. Thank you so thank much. You. You're welcome. Happy holidays. Thank you. We want to say to everyone who shared your nominations with us, thank you. What a delight they were to read and to learn about your best and your favorite people. Thank you for reminding us of the power of giving and of love and of human connection. Like it's been a joy on our side of the street um, to get to read through all of your nominations. And by the way, you guys, everyone listening can also receive gifts. Go to jenhatmaker.com slash gift guide, okay? Um, jenhatmaker.com slash gift guide. We are doing a daily gift giveaway every single day between now and Christmas Eve. Every single day and nothing is under a hundred dollar value. So this is worth your time. Um, again, that is jenhatmaker.com slash gift guide, and you can enter every single day. We hope you will be just as delighted with this conversation as we were. So we are so glad and grateful, honestly, to welcome to the For the Love podcast, Tig Nataro. Tig, good morning, and we are really glad to see you and really glad to meet you and really thankful that you are here with us this morning. I am happy to meet you Mm. and uh, happy to be here as well. Mm. Um, Nice to connect with somebody on this bizarre morning. That is. You guys, we were, if we sound weird, if we sound flat and... God forbid you're watching this on YouTube. Um, it, this just, I know this is going to air later, but this morning is November 6th. So this is the morning after the election. And um, <laughs> I don't even know, Amy, what do we, what do we even say? I'm not really sure. I don't, I haven't yet figured out even how to manage my own children texting me all morning long, much less um, the listening community and Phil's, disorienting this morning and disappointing and um a little you know everything just disrupted and scary and confusing and I don't know what am I missing uh I mean I've never had so many texts in the middle of the night yeah (laughs) from from every time zone Mm. uh Europe included yeah um I don't I don't know what people keep trying to say is uh like we are not alone yeah. in our <laughs> grief and confusion. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I think there's a <clears throat> a time and a place to be <laughs> sad and confused. Yeah, not this moment. How's your house, Tig? Well, I'm actually in um, Toronto working, so I'm living in a an apartment by myself. Mm-hmm. And I was, you know, wh- whichever direction the the I was going to say the pandemic. It doesn't feel too different, but and it, whatever direction the uh, election went, it feels um, odd to be away from mm. my life and family. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as confusing as everything is, I think that my brain just went immediately to not. Just as much as possible to stay focused mm-hmm. on your core beliefs mm-hmm. and um, 
and uh, and moving through life and the world with those in the yeah. forefront because it's really the only thing that that you always can do is yeah have to um i mean obviously there's outside factors always <laughs> in the world but it's really a reminder to um to let your goodness and mm. and all of that be your focus i agree i have five kids they're all voters Mm -hmm. I've got 18 to 26 and we're of course everyone's texting this morning and I told them kind of what you said but shorter Mm -hmm. I just said Mm -hmm. we love each other and our friends and family we love our neighbors getting to live inside our own integrity matters Um, Mm -hmm. and I think that's what we get to do is just move forward in our own integrity and um, Mm -hmm. and that that's not nothing. It's not mm-hmm. nothing to in, in what feels like to me being on the, the side of things that I want to be proud of and that I'll be proud of 10, 20, 30 years from now still. So um, uh, holding the gentler side of mm-hmm. what it means to be an American, I guess, today and what it means to live in a community and in a family and is the best we can do. Um, well, I think it's, yeah, it's no, regardless of who's in office, yeah. it's how you have to move forward anyway. Mm-hmm. And, um, but. What other option do we have? Yeah. We, what, what other option do we have? And so we still have this opportunity to have um, little, small, daily decisions that we make every day. And what do those mm-hmm. look like? And what words do we choose? And um, those collectively mean something. They always have. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's that's what that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah, we'll start with you today. We'll start with you. Yeah, <laughs> and it is great to see you. And you have <clears throat> this history of <laughs> giving us giving us the space to to pin so much humor, but also just lived human experience to your story and the way that you tell it. You're so gifted. You're, you just have, you're, you're just you, there's nobody like you. Um, and so Mm, millions of us have kind of found our way in your wake (laughs) through the stories (laughs) that you tell and being so frankly candid about your life and your childhood and your, your family and your marriage. And I'm grateful for that. Like, thank you for, you didn't have to let all of us into your story at all. You could have picked (laughs) outside things to write a bit about, um, but you use your own experience and it is, I don't know. It's not just hilarious. It's connective. And so Mm -hmm. Thanks for making that choice. Did you ever think, you know what? I've got a little bit too much shit that I don't want to necessarily lay out on display for everyone to, you know, for fodder. Or was it always going to be, listen, this is who I am. This is my story. This is what I'm going to talk about. Well, no. I mean, I, I, I've i evolved as a comedian mm-hmm. over the years and had started as more of a one-liner mm. comedian and observational jokes yeah. and all of that. And then <clears throat> in 2012, I got um, deathly ill mm. with three different uh, diseases, uh, pneumonia, C. diff, which is a, an intestinal disease. Yeah. And then I had uh, inv- invasive cancer and my mother tripped, hit her head, died and my girlfriend and I split up and that was in a four month period of time and then I went on stage and kind of made this decision Mm -hmm. that I was going to talk about everything I was going through because I already had the show booked and all everything was going on and um, I had never really been that open on stage and Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know what was going to happen not only to me in my life, but with the audience. And um, I always say they were the exact 
perfect audience that night because mm. they really carried me through that. And every now and then when mm. I'm out in the world, I run into somebody that was at that show. Wow. And mm. uh, I feel an immediate mm. connection like that is my old buddy. So, mm. um, but I think as time has gone on, so that was in 2012 yeah. and, um, and yeah, I've done a lot of stand up about that time period. I, um, I put out a book and a documentary TV show, all of these different things. And, um, and I think that coming through that time period and all of these different projects, I've realized that there is still that part of me that just likes to write a joke or mm. to be ridiculous or, um, um, maybe I'll share something heavy or personal, but maybe I won't. And, um, and I've, so I've, I've been trying to find the balance of sharing myself, but also, um, knowing that I don't have to all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. Um, so, and, and just that I have those things mm -hmm. that I've put out into the world that I can point to and yeah. be like, well, there's a book, there's a TV show, there's a stand-up special, documentary, all of these things. And it's nice that it's been helpful to mm -hmm. people. But, um, but yeah, I have to find the, the sweet spot mm -hmm. for myself as well. Mm. That was obviously a decision you made for yourself to share your story. But in the TV show, in your books, your entire family's included. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how do they feel yeah. about you speaking so freely yeah. about your life and their role in it? Mm. Um, they're good. I mean, mm. uh, all, all of my parents have since passed away. Mm. Um, my stepfather was the final one. He, he passed away a couple of years ago. But um, my mother never edited me. Mm. Um, um, yeah. And then when, and I was wondering how my brother, my stepfather, yeah. my extended family, I was curious how they would feel. Mm, but, uh, yeah, everybody was just really, um, supportive. And, um, even with my book, my stepfather, he went and bought it the day it mm. came out oh. and he said he sat in the car <laughs> in the parking lot. And started reading it and sat there for hours oh, reading the book. I just got, that's so, I don't know. That's dear. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's really, it was really nice. But yeah, I've always kind of had that luxury when my family mm. didn't agree with me on things. or And that's not to say they didn't agree with what I wrote about or said, mm. um, but they didn't edit me. That is a big deal. It's I, massive. I, it really is. I mean, that was real fertile soil for you to mm -hmm. grow up into the exact person you have become. And I find that kind of rare, honestly, except when I hear you talk about your mom, as you just mentioned, and I realize, oh, you came from a free spirit. Mm -hmm. She had mm -hmm. her own way of being in the world. And so it, it, knowing what you've said about her, it, it does help make sense of mm -hmm. the fact that she went, go run into your field yeah, that you yeah, were. Yeah. Can you talk? I know you've talked at length about her, but mm -hmm. she's a, she was a character. And can you talk a little bit about growing up with your mom and what she was like in the house and what it was like being a kid in that home? <laughs> well, it was a roller coaster. That's for <laughs> sure. Um, but, um, you know, probably like everybody's life, there was, I mean, a lot of great stuff and there was a lot of <laughs> not so great. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but yeah, my mother was an artist and she was really, really funny. And I always tell people that uh, she was somebody that n nobody would ever say to me, oh yeah, I, I think I met your mother. <laughs> sure. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, she was a force. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, uh, but she was also 
you know, she drank, she partied, she kind of did her own thing. And, um, she was not the stereotypical mother. And, um, and that's what she would say is like, you know, you're not going to come home and have, (laughs) she's not going to have cookies baked for me. Um, but, um, but I think that her, uh, the side of her that was an artist and was so such a free spirit. I mean, she used the back of our home as her canvas and painted all over the back. And, um, and um, I think she just really connected with that side of me that was an artist. Mm-hmm. And, um, and my struggles in school, she... She wanted me to do well, but I think she understood, and um, she was. Um, I don't. I don't know. Like I, when people have that, yeah. Like people will say to me, even still, they'll say, don't, "Aren't you sad? Your mother mm. didn't see you nominated for this award or on this," and I'm like. For me, it's more I wish she could have met my children and my Mm -hmm. wife, you know, because my mother, I was never doing stand up for her approval. Mm. Um, And I think and uh, if I was in some smoky saloon in South Dakota, making $50 a night, she thought I was cool, you know, (laughs) because I was pursuing what I wanted to pursue. And, um, and one of the things that I was told growing up by her always was to tell everyone to go to hell if they had a problem with me. (laughs) And I think having that Mm, instilled in me really, and it's, and I certainly do not walk around telling everyone to go to hell, but, uh, I think there's this thing in me Mm. that would, that you can, whether you know I was told that <laughs> growing up or not, I think people can feel it that I don't have like a a, a desperation um, and I'm not going to do backflips for anybody and, um, and if you have a problem mm-hmm. with me. I mean, certainly if somebody has a problem, a legit problem with me and there's something to discuss. Yeah, if you've been an sure. asshole, you can deal with yeah, that. Yeah, right. Yeah, but... Um, but no, I, I feel very lucky that, um, she, like from the time I was very little, she was like, you tell them all to go to hell. Gosh. And so. Can you imagine being raised in that sort of self-assurance? No. I mean, I really cannot. <laughs> I, 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 we had the opposite. It was basically everybody else's like needs and opinions and thoughts matter the most. Right. Uh-huh. It will kind of shape shift. Yeah. To make yeah. those possible, but I mean, I cannot imagine being handed that level of freedom. I know at a young age, and how you were able to sort of move in a liberated way into young adulthood—that's that's a gift, for sure. For sure, it's a gift. I'm so thankful for it. Um, and um, yeah, I think it comes across in big ways, but also in little ways. <laughs> I'll admit, last night in between watching. The news. Uh-huh. I was flipping back and forth to your old episodes mm. of um, "Under a Rock," mm. Mm-hmm. like where you have no clue who a celebrity is. <laughs> yeah, and they yeah. they give you clues, and you're just yeah. unabashedly like, never not, heard of them. Not ashamed at all uh-huh. of not uh-huh. knowing who anyone is. Uh-huh. It was so refreshing, honestly, mm. Mm. and their uh-huh. reaction of. Wait, you really, mm-hmm. you really don't know me, and you're like, no, but like, <laughs> let's figure it that's out. Amazing. Give me a clue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I really amazing. Loved it. Like, well, they they knew what they were coming on the show uh-huh. for, which is helpful. Um, so if they got the concept, and and people would write me and say, oh, this is so not true. Uh-huh. You know who celebrities are. Yeah. It's like, of course, I've worked with celebrities. I've watched different celebrities, but I don't follow pop culture. Yeah. Right. In like, I was going to say in the way that most people do. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I follow it in that I work in entertainment. Mm-hmm. And so I know some shows that are on. I know some celebrities. 
Um, but I, I, I asked my sons, um, I don't know, probably within the past six months, I said, have hmm. you, have either of you seen me t- <laughs> turn a TV on or watch it or, mm-hmm. and they were like, no. Mm-hmm. And, um, and Stephanie, my wife makes fun of me because, um, the way our couches are situated in our TV room, I'm often at the end of a couch facing hmm. away from the TV yeah. and looking at everybody that's in the room <laughs> and whatever my family's watching, they're, they're looking in that direction. I'm looking at them. Hmm. And uh, Stephanie pointed that out recently. She's like, even just how you sit on the couch, <laughs> you have your back to the TV. <laughs> um, but yeah, under a rock, it's, it's based on um, it's, it's true. It's very true. Is that also how you do with social media? Are you a non-user? No, I, I have a, an Instagram account. Mm-hmm. Um, I first started it to document photos of our cat. Sure. And then fluff. I had done a sh- fluff. Yeah, mm-hmm. fluff. Yeah. Well, we have three cats now, oh. but the 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 account was made for fluff when she was our mm-hmm. only cat. And I had done a show with the comedian Kevin Nealon one sure, night. Sure, that's my friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I showed Kevin a picture of my cat. And I remember he tagged me <laughs> on that show. And then that's how I started getting followers uh-huh. because I had never shared my account with anyone. Mm-hmm. And I was truly just showing him my cat. But he flagged, I guess, the name of my account. Um, but, yeah, I'm on, I'm on Instagram. Um, but... Probably not as much mm. as uh, the average person. Mm, that sounds nice. I want to be. <laughs> I want to be like that. <laughs> uh, as as open as you are with your own life and your family of origin, do you and Stephanie talk about the role your kids mm. will play mm-hmm. in that space as they get older? How old are they now, the boys? They will be. Eight yeah. and a half in December. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good um, question. So, I mean, parenting yeah. is such good material. Mm. So, I'm sorry, you're asking what their role will be yeah. in, in what? Like, like, will you will you be as open about mm-hmm. their lives mm. and um, yeah. your parenting, parenting experience yeah. as they get older? Yeah, I guess they might decide that. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, before I had a family, I didn't really consider anything or anyone because my, like I said, my family never edited me. So when I went on stage, I just talked about whatever. Mm -hmm. And anytime my mother was uncomfortable with something, I would tease her because I would notice she would move air from one <laughs> cheek to the other. She'd it's go amazing tell. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, Oh, you're uncomfortable with that. And she'd be like, Well, you know, <laughs> shrug. <laughs> sure, but uh but it was never like don't say anything or hmm. don't tell anybody that. It was more of like mm, it was her corking it. And um hmm. so uh once I got together with Stephanie, <clears throat> there were moments where she would point something out and say, mm, I don't know if that's for anyone but mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. And then I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I had not ever considered, uh-huh. uh, like I said, anybody uh, with stand up. And then, but it made sense the things. And she's, it's not like she's eagle eyeing everything I'm doing, but sometimes she would hear things and be like, eh, Mm. I don't know about that. Mm. And then when we had children, it was more so, and I think I just naturally started to be like, oh, right, this is not just about me Mm -hmm. now. And we don't show our kids on social media anymore. And, um, but we, I still talk about them on stage and they love it. They do. Uh, Oh, they they love it so much. Um, and, um, when I leave to go, when I leave the house to go do a show, when I'm in LA, I'll say, all right, guys, I have to go, uh, tell jokes and stories about you. I'll kiss (laughs) them goodnight. And, uh, and they get really excited. Uh So I guess if that shifts or if, 
Stephanie flags something and is like, oh, I feel like mm. that needs to end, then we'll have another discussion. Uh huh. And it does. It evolves. I yeah. I envy your um, perch from which you sit, which you at least have a little bit of social media experience under your belt to kind of do this well. Uh, my kids were super little before we even had the internet, hardly at all. And so we, I didn't have any precedence for it. And so mm-hmm. I think I would do things a lot differently now, kind of having watched social media evolve and change and watching how it's affected my kids and um, mm-hmm. their adolescence and their young adulthood. And th- there's just a, there, there are better guardrails, I think, mm-hmm. around being a public person on social media than there used to be when it was just the wild west. Yeah. Um, and so I, when the kids shift, they'll let you know and it's good to follow their lead. Although I please indulge me. I know this is all over, all over the national television sets that we own, but speaking of telling stories about your kids, um, we, I saw your clip on Colbert. Um, will you, Please just tell the story about your, um, the sons who were apparently confused about you. Yeah. Uh Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so they're almost eight and a half when they were seven and a half, Stephanie and I were driving them to school and their school is six minutes away from our house. We were going to drop them off and go start our day. And, um, and we were just chatting in the front seat and Max and Finn are chatting in the back seat like we always do. And Stephanie made some comment about um, us being gay. Uh-huh. And our son, Finn, <laughs> leaned forward and he said, you're gay? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I, turned, <laughs> yeah, I turned around and I said, yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, and then he said, what's gay? <laughs> and I was like, what is happening? happening? I was so confused oh, because gosh. there are pictures around our house sure. of our wedding day. Mm-hmm. Um, they know they have two moms. Yeah. Um, so I explained what gay was. And we're like at three minutes away from the school. <laughs> okay. And so I'm explaining what gay is to seven and a half year olds. <laughs> and then I... Uh, And I felt insecure because I thought if while I was describing things, I was like, oh, what if they're thinking this isn't the family I want, you know? (laughs) And so I said, what do you guys think about what I'm telling you? And and Finn was like, I love our family. And I and I just had this like relief. And then we drop them off and Stephanie and I drive home going like half a mile an hour, (laughs) just like what just (laughs) happened? Our kids didn't know we were gay. (laughs) And and, and the more we Um. talked about it, we realized that just because they know that we're married or that they have two moms, that doesn't equal gay. Sure. um, Because we never came out to them. And I've, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here looking the way I do on this podcast. (laughs) I'm wearing a flannel. (laughs) There, there's. It's been so long since I've had to sit down and say to somebody, "I have something, something to, to tell you, you about That's my right. life that That's might right. be surprising." <laughs> and I did not think I had to come out to my children. <laughs> and um, and then I got a call. Um, you know, Ira, Gra- Ira Glass from This American yeah. Life. Um, they wanted to do. Um, uh, they had heard the story mm-hmm. on Colbert as yeah. well. And they were like, oh, we want to do, we want to talk to you about doing a segment about your follow-up conversation uh-huh. that you had with Max and Finn. Uh-huh. And I was like, <laughs> what follow? I, we didn't have a follow-up <laughs> right. conversation. Yeah. They just, we just went into second grade and they, we went yeah, on with our lives. <laughs> yeah, we never talked about it again. So then I already felt like a terrible parent. And then now I'm like, oh, my gosh, I didn't have a follow-up conversation. Sure. We're even worse than I thought. <laughs> and so, I, you know, they were like, okay, can we send you these um, this list of questions and will you record your yeah. kids and will you have the follow-up question, uh, conversation for this segment. And I was like, yeah, sure. And so Max and Finn are coloring and I go in and I'm like, Hey guys. And I have a document with me that I'm trying to hide and I'm hiding my phone. 
And uh, because if they knew I was recording them, they Uh would be so irritated. And so I'm truly reading a document (laughs) going, "Um, so (laughs) when you found out I was gay, how did you feel? I can't. And they're they're just like, fine. And I'm like, when you talk to staff and faculty at your school <laughs> no. you know and, and so i'm asking them all these questions and they are just, they're so annoyed they just want to be coloring and um and uh and that, but the beauty of it that i came back to this american life with was my kids it, uh-huh. it's nothing to them That's right. it is nothing they truly if anything, I just looked so lame. Uh-huh. Like they were looking at me like, "Why are you being weird? Get a life, uh-huh. you uh-huh. L- loser, gay person. <laughs> Go find something to do." Um, and so I, it was really uh-huh. actually nice to uh, come back and just be like, "It, it." What I tell people is the way they respond about it is if I said to you, Jen, mm-hmm. or you, Amy. How did it feel the day you realized you were a human being? Mm-hmm. How, how did you yeah. feel? Be like, what do you mean? Uh-huh. No, no, no. Tell me deep down. What did you, what was it like processing right. that you're we're human? Like, Tell God, me. God, why is she acting like this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was, my kids were truly like, yeah. you're a loser. Go get a life. <laughs> Is, You're gay. We get it. Who fine. cares? It's boring. What's for dinner? Yeah. Like, um, it's both Go hilarious listen to the and Indigo refreshing. Girls. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> I can't with the, um, when you speak to staff and faculty, <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm so tickled. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Um, I'd love to ask you though. I mean, in that camp, so the boys are like, you know, tra-la-la, but the truth is, that you have meant a lot to the LGBTQ plus community, a lot. Your Mm -hmm. work has mattered and your, your comeuppance was during a time where it's so bananas to see the difference in representation really just in the last decade. It's Mm -hmm. been quick work, um, comparatively speaking, when you look backward over the scope of history. And so your voice has been, really, really impactful. Even just your presence on a stage, your presence on a show, your presence on a New York times list, like that has mattered. And, and you've been rewarded and honored for that a lot of times. And so I think I would just love, I, my, uh, I've got a queer kid, she's 24. And so she's kind of, her coming out story was on the precipice of things getting really better. And mm-hmm. so she's still got a foot back in those shameful days where she was afraid yeah. and mm-hmm. in the closet and hiding and nervous. And now to watch just 10 years later. Yeah. So such improvement. So that's a very, very, very long runway to simply ask you, what has that meant to you? are just being yourself. You're just being yourself in an honest way, but just in front of a lot of people. And so I'd love to hear what that has felt like for you over the course of the past decade, more or less, and what you're hopeful for, um, not just for more queer people in your space, but just period, just in the world. I mean, well, thank you for all of those nice things that you said. And, um, and I think that, um, kind of it all ties back also to my mother um, of, you know, I didn't just like bust out of the closet. Um, I went through my own process and uh, figuring things out. I wasn't born knowing that I was gay. Um, My kids weren't born knowing I was gay. (laughs) Clearly. Um, But, um, you know, when I did come out, it, it, it was just an authentic feeling and decision of like, I, this is who I am. And, and, um, and, uh, I I think like, even in my work, whatever I'm doing it, it, like right now I'm in Toronto filming Star Trek and Star Trek has been such a, um, 
just such a since day one since since it first aired it's this open inclusive yeah. diverse yeah. universe right. and it's such a a pleasure to be a part of positive things mm. and <laughs> actually if i can share this you can um <laughs> Uh, one of my favorite things that my son Max said recently, um, <laughs> I guess this is where I hope the world mm. is going. Okay. Um, he said to us, he watches cartoons, that's his his thing, and he, um, he said, you know, you know what I've noticed mm. about all of the cartoons that I watch? And we were like, what? And he said, every family has one dad, one mom, one brother, one sister, mm. one dog, mm. one cat, and a goldfish. <laughs> and we were like, yeah, what do you <laughs> what do you make of that? And he said, well, I don't think that's what most families look like. Oh. And uh and I said, um, yeah, well, uh you know, again, what do you, what do you think? And he said, well, oh, I, I, we said, why, why do you think they um, yeah. do that? And he said, well, I'm pretty sure they do that mm. for diversity and inclusion. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie and I no. could not believe that. How hilariously oh. backwards he had that. <laughs> but in his mind, the cartoons are checking off everyone. And they just want to make a room for these people with dads. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, they belong yes. here, too. Yes, in yes, story yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my God. So yeah. that's, oh. that's where I hope oh uh, things are going. That a child is that. watching. <laughs> oh, we didn't expect him to say that either. I hope that when kids are watching cartoons yes. and they see that, that they think that that is for diversity and inclusion <laughs> so because precious. of the world he's coming sure. from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my gosh. Oh, God. Oh, I'm going to carry that in my heart all day long. <laughs> uh, it's pretty oh, incredible. It's so incredible. Okay, well. It's amazing. Before we wrap up. <laughs> yes. We've got a few just like rapid fire, quick, lighthearted mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. Just a little touchdown. What's your favorite place to do stand up? Oh, I want to hear this. Where Where's my favorite mm -hmm. place? Um, I would say probably at Largo mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It's um, just it's a venue that I have regularly, near monthly performed at for probably twenty five years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Hometown crowd. So, um, yeah. What is the weirdest gig you've ever done? Well, <laughs> gosh, there's been so many. Um, but the weirdest would be um, I my first college agent that I ever got. She was a very specific agent who, when, a, when colleges didn't use up all of their money mm. for, you know, entertainment, she would hire her clients on these college mm -hmm. gigs for much less money than most college performers would make, um, just to get you in there performing at the college. And maybe you only make $2,500 mm -hmm. and that's, that's the, mm -hmm. that's your fee. Um, and you could be performing in, um, a lunch, a cafeteria, sure. you know, just nobody listening to you, that kind of thing. And, um, and I was just at a point in my career where I was like, wow, this is good money. And this is a great opportunity to get into colleges. And I got booked at Pepperdine university mm, okay. and I show up and it's in, um, so because this money was like the last bit of money the reason they have to use up all their money is so they get the same. Uh -huh. If the college doesn't right. use all of their budget, uh -huh. they, they don't get it. that. Yeah. They cut it. So, um, <laughs> so I get booked, I go to Pepperdine 
And, um, and because it's not a person or a gig that the college cares about, mm. I show up, it's in a, a student lounge oh, gosh. and nobody's there. Zero people? <laughs> Zero people oh are in the lounge. I'm so stressed. And, I, and, and it's me and the two people from the college that have booked me. And I'm like, so what do we do? And they said, you have to do your show. Oh, that's so cruel. <laughs> and so I was like, wow. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, and I said, is it okay if I just sit? Because they were sitting on a couch. Mm-hmm. And I said, do you mind if I just sit on the couch with you? can't handle this at all. And so I sat between them with a microphone plugged in. And I just told them my jokes for an hour. No way. With no, nobody showed up <gasps> to that performance. And um, No way is that real. My secondhand embarrassment is... <laughs> Out, it's through the roof right now. Did you just kind of yeah. like back and forth? Yeah, I was just like, so when I was in uh, seventh grade, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is such a good answer. But I also, I so you know, it, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's awkward, but I also am kind of the perfect person for that because. I, you know, again, they can go to hell. It's yeah, fine. Sure. It's not, it's, I, I wasn't even mad. I was like, this is, re- this is uh-huh. so insane. Uh-huh. Um, You're like, but I will, ch- I will cash my $2,500 check. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks. Thanks for the memories. That's oh, my gosh. rent. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Last one. Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know you, you come from a line of artists, mm-hmm. your mother and your grandmother, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Yep. If you weren't an actor and comedian, do you think you would have been in the arts uh, like your family? Or do you think you'd be do, so- do something completely different? Well, I also play guitar and drums, and, mm-hmm. I, uh, and I did pursue that yeah. for a little while, but I'm not great at either of them. I'm just okay, but I probably would have still pursued that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Stephanie and I also talk about if we didn't do what we do now, what would we do? And, uh, she would be the person that is in the little box Mm -hmm. on a bridge that pushes the button and the bridge opens so the boat can go through. Somebody has Um, to do that. Yeah. And, she wanted to do that so she could read all day. Sure. And then I told her that I would, um, like, say playing music didn't work out, my fallback would be, and I would not put it past me to still do this now if my career went to hell, mm-hmm. but um, I would deliver pizza. Sure, this I makes did sense. That, this makes sense. I, I did that uh-huh. years ago when I was a teenager, uh-huh. and I think it's the perfect job, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> okay. And it's because you have a job, but you don't have to be in at your job, job. Uh-huh. at the job with your boss or anything. And you get in your car, you listen to whatever music you want. Your car smells like pizza. Yum. And then you deliver pizza and you get cold, hard cash in your hand. Right on the spot. Right on the spot. I mean, really, so where's the downside do. is my question. There isn't Yeah, one. I hear you. Also, yeah. And on the side, I have a band. Yeah. I love this so much. Uh, yeah. People who are getting their pizza delivered are happy people. Happy to see you. Absolutely. And You're nobody's bad. There mad. is nothing bad about this job. And when I had it, I loved it. And I would go in, I liked my coworkers, and it'd be nice to see them for a second. Yeah. And I'd get in the car and smell pizza. Brilliant. I don't hate that at all. Um, okay. Thank you for making us laugh this morning. I did not think it possible. And I am just, I cannot believe we've just laughed for the last 40 minutes and I'm delighted. Um, and just cool. for being who you are, we are, we are, we are humongous fans of you and have been for a really long time. And we were so looking forward to talking to you. And so thank you for being with us on this weird morning. And thank you for having me. Yeah. It was so nice to connect <laughs> With uh, some people yeah. on this day, like what? Well, like I'm truly just alone in my yeah. apartment in Toronto. Yes. Um, May the Star but, Trek people love you well today. 
May yeah. they, they come around you. Yes. Thank <laughs> in you. Solidarity. For the Star Trek blessing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> thank you. Now, is there, do, do I, am I able to promote my podcast? Oh or, my God. Uh, do you guys yes. do all of that? Here's my question right here. Ask Tig mm. what she's loving right now about what she's doing. Please tell oh, us. Oh. Tell yes. us about Handsome. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. I have a podcast called Handsome. Right. Uh, I do that with uh, my fellow comedians, Fortune Feimster and Mae Martin. It's hilarious. Um, I'm a listener. Uh-huh. And, uh, well, thank you. And then I'm currently working out new material um, a lot about my kids and, um, I'm performing regularly in Toronto and LA working on this new material. And, um, and then my, my special hello again is on Amazon and it's also out. Um, the audio version is out now. Um, so get that for the holidays. You're just killing it. You're killing it out there. It's working well, thank out. You. It's it working out this career you've made. And if it doesn't, uh-huh. you know, you I got can pizza. deliver pizza. That's exactly yeah, right. There you oh, go. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to tell you at the top, you have a doppelganger. Oh, oh. who is it? My Tom Cruise friend. <laughs> Tom no, Cruise. I would say mm-hmm. my oldest friend, but that sounds uh-huh. unkind. My the person I've been friends with the yeah. longest, like kindergarten. Uh-huh. Does she get tig all the time? Gets mistaken for tig a lot, <laughs> oh, a so lot. Hilarious. We'll have to put her like, picture up when we release this. Episode. She was just in Paris, uh-huh. and someone came up and asked her. Oh, Tig. Well, recently somebody said to me, um, no offense, but you look like uh, that comedian, Tig Notaro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and I was like, oh, well, that's me. And he was like, no. no oh, my offense. gosh. <laughs> no no offense. offense. I hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. <laughs> None taken, sir. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks she Chad. she always considers it a huge compliment. Very good. So, Listen, well, yeah. yeah, thank you. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> okay. okay, thanks for being with us this thank morning. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Nice to see, see you. you. All right, you guys. I hope that interview found you in a happy place, <laughs> or it certainly left you in a happy place. And I, for one, am just thankful to have had this hour with her and with Amy and with you. And so she's got so much awesome stuff to watch and read and consume. And so if you have missed it, I will round all of it up for you. Go over to jenhatmaker.com under the podcast tab. We'll have this episode. If you want to share it, we will have show notes and then we'll put all of her things, socials, movies, books, shows all of it. So you can, um, make up for lost time if you are new to the TIG universe. And so, um, thank you for listening and being with us today. Um, we are glad to have had a community that feels like a soft place to land on days that are both hard and sometimes surprisingly wonderful. That's, I guess that's how life is. That's life. I guess that's how life is. And so... Thanks for being with us. Thanks for being with us. See you next week.